once upon a time. <laughs> there lived on an utterly uninhabited island in the Red Sea, a Parsi man. Now this Parsi man living on this utterly uninhabited island had three things. He had a hat that he wore, off of which the sun's rays uh, shone in more than oriental splendor. He had a knife that he carried, which was very sharp. And he had a little stove, the type of which I'm afraid, my dear friends, we should never touch. Now, one day this Parsi man decided to make himself a cake. He took some flour and some water and some currants and he, he swirled it around, put it in a pan, and he put it on top of his stove because he himself could touch the stove. And he began to make what he would call a superior combustible. By that I mean to say a very delicious cake. It was three feet across and two feet wide. And just as our Parsi man was about to, to partake of the superior combustible, out of the utterly uninhabited interior came a piggy-faced rhinoceros with those dark piggy eyes and this large horn. And he came out and went, Hoom! and he scared the Parsi man. This Parsi man climbed up the tree. And now this rhinoceros, I must say, had no manners. On that day, the day before, or any day after, this rhinoceros, and he did not ask permission, but speared that cake right on his horn and began to eat it. Now this rhinoceros looked as the rhinoceroses did just as they came off Noah's Ark, only perhaps a little bit bigger. And by that I mean to say that our rhinoceros's skin fit very tight, much like a raincoat on a wet day, and it was held together with three buttons under its belly. Well, our piggy rhinoceros ate the entire cake <clears throat> and waddled off back into the utterly uninhabited interior without saying please or without saying thank you, I might add. Well, the Parsi man claimed, climbed down from his tree and he uttered this poem. He said, which you have not heard, I don't think, so I shall share it with you, shall oh, I? Wonderful. He said, thems that take what the Parsi man bakes, makes big mistakes. Now this means much more than you would infer. For you will see that a couple weeks later on the utterly utter uninhabited island, there became quite a, a, a strong heat wave so that everybody who lived on this uninhabited island came out to the sea. And they took off whatever clothes they had and they swam in the Red Sea to cool off. So the Parsi man came and he took off his hat and swam in the sea. And out of the utterly uninhabited interior came our rhinoceros with little piggy eyes. And he walked right past the Parsi man and he never even said hello, for he had no manners that day, nor the day before, nor any day after. And the rhinoceros unbuttoned his skin and took it off, hung it on a bush, and went swimming in the Red Sea and began to blow bubbles out of his horn. Now. When the Parsi man saw this, he got a smile that wrapped twice around his face. And he skipped back to his camp. And he took his hat and he began to scoop up all the breadcrumbs in his camp. For you see, the Parsi man never cleaned his camp and all he ate was cake. So he took all of those dried cake crumbs and dried currants and put them in his hat. And he walked back to where the rhinoceros' skin was hanging on a bush. And then, very quietly, he poured all of the crumbs into all of the corners of the rhinoceros' skin. And he filled it quite up, quite completely. And then went back, climbed a tree, and watched to see what would happen. Well, it wasn't long before the rhinoceros came out of the water, thoroughly cooled off. And he put on his skin, and he buttoned it quite tight. And then... He began to feel an itch, and, and he began to wiggle a bit in his skin, but that didn't matter at all to the itch. <laughs> so he began to, with his skin up to tree, and he began to slide back and forth, but the more he scratched, the more it itched, and the more it itched, the more he scratched, and he began to roll around on the sand, and he tried to get the itches out, but that did not matter at all to the cake crumbs which were inside his skin. And he, the more he itched, the more he began to, to take that skin, which is very tight, and he itched and he itched and he made great big folds over his neck and his legs began to have folds of skin. And then, and then, as he was rolling along, off popped, 
all three buttons so that the rhinoceros could not get his skin off. Well, he itched as long as he could, and then, in a very bad mood, the rhinoceros went back into the utterly uninhabited interior to where he lives to this day. Still, I might add, in a bad mood, and still you will find the rhinoceros itching. But now, instead of having smooth skin like he had coming off the ark, his skin is filled with great big folds, as you will see whenever you see a rhinoceros. And as for the Parsi man, he came down from the tree, put on his hat, grabbed his knife, picked up his stove, which he is allowed to touch. And he walked off into a different, utterly uninhabited interior. <laughs>